over really the last uh, two or three years, uh, this has become now the absolute, you know, uh, transforming therapy. And uh, it was really 2004 that we saw the first license for chemotherapy. 2021, the Checkmate 743 trial read out as positive. And um, this has now changed practice. And in many countries, immunotherapy with ipilimumab and nivolumab is the first line standard of care, quite rightly. Um, what's interesting is that uh, there are two major groups of patients with mesothelioma, the non-epithelioid and the epithelioid. And it's the patients with um, non-epithelioid mesothelioma that have a remarkable benefit uh, with immunotherapy compared with those patients having chemotherapy. And because, of course, these uh, two groups, the epithelial and non-epithelial, were, were grouped together within the trial, um, you know, the overall result was positive. But we have a totally uh, transformative, never been seen before activity compared with chemotherapy in the uh, non non-squamous group. Now, um, we've just heard, actually, I think it's a public announcement, but we haven't had the data yet, of course, that um, a study um, which was conducted by the uh, CCTG, which is the Canadian um, trial group, um, comprising chemoimmunotherapy, uh, is a positive trial. This is one in which um, overall survival has been shown to be significantly longer. Um, for a study in which uh, chemotherapy, standard of care, was compared with chemotherapy plus an anti-PD-1 pembrolizumab. Now, um, we've seen this already. We've seen the remarkable transformation in the front line of lung cancer. And again, we're seeing this with mesothelioma. Now, of course, we need to know what the magnitude of benefit was, but there was some phase two data published recently, judged with uh, thoracic oncology, that bodes very well. If they uh, seen significance, then hopefully the magnitude is very similar. The implications are quite significant, actually, as they were in lung cancer, because although um, we, uh, we have chemotherapy now as a sort of second line go-to licensed systemic therapy after pure combination immunotherapy. If we end up moving towards a chemotherapy paradigm, as we have seen with lung cancer, and bearing in mind there are other trials behind this, this in 227 we've also got the BEAT um, uh, meso trial, European study. Um, we also have the um, DREAM, uh, DREAMER 3 trial, which is an international phase three, both pivotal trials. If they read out, then I think we can say for sure that chemotherapy is going to be back to the front line with immunotherapy. Then that leaves a sort of a barren uh, relapse landscape. And that's precisely why I think, um, you know, what I talked about initially, the idea of precision medicine may be an opportunity. These patients who are, you know, having a very short survival in that second line, third line setting, if they have vulnerabilities which can be actioned therapeutically, um, you know, we may be able to see real changes actually in outcome and survival if we can do it right. But we're just at the beginning of personalized therapy, so I'm hoping to see some new and exciting advances. Whether we'll get an EGFR type uh, treatment for this cancer is unclear, but that's our goal.